Hey guys, what's up and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you pretty much everything you need to know so far regarding a season 2. And there actually is some very cool stuff. So guys, make sure to watch the full video. And with that being said, here we go. Okay, so let's start off with new equipment. So, over here we have the new primary weapon being the Type 19 Assault Rifle, which I believe is based on the QBZ-191 in real life. It features a bunch of custom attachments being two different sights, a bipod foregrip, a 75 round drum mag, and a marksman magazine as well, which turns it into a semi-auto DMR. I also need to mention this, does the sight now kinda remind you of Mickey Mouse for some reason, or is it just me? Now the second weapon is going to be a spear, which features multiple attacks being a 3 piece thrusting and swinging motion attack. So cool stuff. Next up we have a new operator skill which generates an electronic wave to destroy enemy deployables, disrupts the mini map and some score streaks as well and this is known as Havoc. Up next, Pumped is getting some competition with the new Jet Boost BR class, which essentially gives you advanced movement in the form of wall running, increased as sliding, and boost jumping as well. Basically, it's kind of like BO3 movement to some extent, but in COD Mobile. Next up on the topic of advanced movement, we're getting a new mode known as Boost Assault, which gives everyone in the lobby advanced movement, being wall running, increased slides, and boost jumping as well, just like the new BR class. And I played this in the beta, and it was a lot of fun. Now next up, here's a look at the new MP map coming to the game, which is yet another version of Nuketown. But it's a really nice one, being Nuketown 2065 with a Lunar New Year theme and twist. Not only does it look amazing, it's also going to be perfect for the new advanced movement game mode. Anyways though, here we have a look at the new seasonal tournament camo and to be very honest, I'm kinda underwhelmed. Like I'm still gonna grind for it, but to be honest, I'm not a huge fan. But give me your thoughts down below. Now in some very exciting news, the player level has been increased again to 350, with a bunch of new rewards including the Machete Cosmos, the Bi-15 Cosmos, the Molotov Dark Matter, the SKS Cosmos, and the Alcar 9 Dark Matter as well. Cool stuff. Now as for ranked rewards, here we have a quick look at the main rewards, which includes a pretty nice reskin of Vanguard, a Groza skin, which you guys can see over here, and a bunch more. Not bad. Also to note, the new uh, series being added to the Reconstruct tab is Series 1 at 2023. Next up, let's check out some changes to the Elite missions. Okay, so the Lost Source Terra crate is replacing the Cure Hunter crate in Season 2 and it is going to work a bit different. Okay, so like always, if you hit Legendary in either MP or BR, you're gonna get a Legendary Medal. However, this time if you grind 10,000 rank points in either, you're gonna get another. This is a W change in my opinion, however if you don't want to do that, you don't have to, you can also just get Legendary in MP and in BR to get that extra medal. Okay. Another big change is now you only need 6 medals to open up the crate. Tokens are now no longer required and they have been reworked to give different rewards. So instead of needing the tokens for the weapon crates, we now can use them to unlock faction rewards like avatars, frames and calling cards, which you guys can see in the background. So yeah, definitely give me your thoughts on these changes down below. Anyways though, now let's check out some new settings and features. Okay, so motion blur and motion blur scale have been added, but I'm not entirely sure how to select them as they are grayed out at the moment. We also have a new hitting sound enhancement feature setting, which sounds like the following.
Next up, you can now sort by price in the credit store, as well as the UI has also been updated. They've also reworked the post-match analysts, which now shows you detailed stats on impact, deal, props at uh, being equipment, loadouts and achievements as well. It's a W feature in my opinion. Up next, we have quite a big change for BR in terms of the platform, where it now has a Lunar New Year theme as well as drones which you can shoot to drop loot. But that's not all. It also features not one, but two different cooking mini games. Yes, you heard that right. Kinda weird, but I'm actually looking forward to it. So yeah, definitely give me your thoughts on that down below. Moving on some more, here's a quick look at the new battle pass, which includes skins for David Mason, Battery, Tiangu, and for the first time ever, Isabella. As well as for guns, we have the Type 19, the OTS 9, finally, the Man of War, the HSO, and the UL736 as well. Next year we have a look at the new Day24 login character, which is a reskin of Otter, known as Folsom Fighter. So okay. Next up here we have our first look at the new Mythic being the Type 19, which is actually pretty insane. It's actually very different compared to every other Mythic in the game. And its different forms is actually different at times of the year. E.g. we have Spring here, we have Summer, over here is Autumn, and here is Winter as well. It's actually a pretty cool skin, and I like that almost 2D looking sight. Not a bad skin whatsoever, and also very different compared to the others. Now as for legendaries, we have a few. Okay, so we have this absolutely beautiful looking prestige, uh, AK-117 Meltdown, but in blue, very nice. We also have the AK Iron Light, the DLQ Dark Void, the Spear Striking Azure, a legendary sword which might be exclusive to uh, the CN version, and also a legendary Fennec which I left for last, as you can actually swap between two colors by inspecting your weapon. Actually a very cool feature. Now also on the topic of legendaries, Garena is getting the M4 Royal Black Soul for free in Season 2, but at the moment we have no info regarding Global. I guess all we can do is hope and wait, but yeah, don't get your hopes too high. Anyways though, here's all the new lucky boxes and strong boxes arriving in Season 2, being the Jackdaw Lucky Box, the Steel Dragon Lucky Box, the Dynastic Steel Lucky Box, the Glazed Porcelain Lucky Box, the Royal Silk Strong Box, the Sand Snake Strong Box, the Pink and Teal Strong Box, and the Red Orchid Strong Box as well. Now as for Lucky Draws, we have the following. So we have the AK and Tempest Draw, the Spear and Long Yun Draw, the DLQ and Cryptus Draw, the Mythic Type 19 and Dark Shepherd Draw, the Phoenix Draw with Shadow Fall, and the straw which might be exclusive to the CN version with the legendary uh, sword and the pay to win skins for the buy 15 and CBR as well. But yeah, that one might be exclusive to the CN version, let's wait and see. Now next up here we have all the balance changes for both weapons and equipment, pause if you wish to read through all of that, and also over here is all the new ground loot changes for BR as well, again pause if you are interested in that. Anyways though guys, moving on to our final topic of the day, here is the new lobby background where we can see the new Nuketown 2065 Lunar New Year map, it actually looks very very nice. And now guys, to finish off today's video, here is the new theme music for season 2. So thank you guys so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.